G'day everybody, where's Wally here? Well, today we're going to have a look at Banjo. Banjo was trying to take on Wolfie. I think he's done one of the best jobs at failing that I've ever seen. And he did it in 48 minutes, which must be some sort of flurf record. Hello guys, greetings from Japan. I hope you are doing fine in these difficult times. Hope you don't have to wear a mask. So, let's queue up Eddie and see what he's got. This morning I'll be making a video addressing some of the points of a video that Wolfie 6020 recently uploaded. The video is called Three Aviation Points Flat Earthers Keep Recycling. So let's explain it to them again. So to debunk Wolfie's claim that flat earthers keep recycling points, you are going to repeat the points. Right. So it's very difficult for me to tell, well, is this guy a liar or is he being naive? Or well, Eddie, there is another possibility that Wolfie, you know, he's been flying since before he was driving, 16. Of course, you will think you know more than a seasoned professional. And guess where that puts you, mate? That's right, Dunning-Kruger, upper left. Move over, Dim Dim, move over, Pookie. Now, they are able to track these blue planes. Uh, wouldn't that be just because they have replaced the transponders and they are more powerful and they, they, they can get the signal from ground ground base stations? Wouldn't that be the case, Wolfie? I don't know. Well, that's the old school ground-based ADSB, Banjo. This map right here. ADBS, ADSB is actually not new as Wolfie was saying. Wolfie never said it's new, only the satellite receiver version of it is new. Do you not understand this, Eddie? How are you failing at comprehending? I may not be a smart man. Look at this. If it is ADSB system, so advanced and dependent on, only on satellites, and there are about 4,000 satellites orbiting Earth, how come all those 4,000 satellites are servicing or helping just this region here in Canada? Why not? The other regions are being uh, helped by this system since 2009. 4,000 only satellites? Yeah, but you're looking for GPS satellites and Iridium satellites. They are the only ones that are used in this scenario, Eddie. How do you keep messing this up? I may not be a smart man. That's the only reference to satellite you will find in these 168 pages. FAA document about this system, ADSB. So I really question whether this is uh, satellite-based at all, or if it's another ground-based system masquerade as a satellite system. Well, it was ground-based, and now it's both ground-based and satellite-based. How do pilots and air traffic control make the crossing as safe as possible? On the way today to New York, we will cross the Atlantic Ocean and there's limited or no radar coverage from ATC. That's why we followed, let's say, highways in the sky and all the aircraft are separated from each other 10 minutes, so we have to fly a fixed speed over the ocean. Oh, and you do realize, Eddie, that these highways in the skies will go away in a year or so once the Arian system is really ubiquitous. It will allow for the more efficient routing of aircraft, and they're going to move all over the place, very much like they do over the land. Just have a look at what they do over Europe and over USA. Now imagine them being able to move freely like that over the oceans, which once the Arian system is fully implemented, that's exactly what the planes are going to do. And these highway systems will be no longer needed. We departed Sydney and flew to Christchurch, New Zealand, where we refuelled and picked up an additional passenger. From there, we flew across the South Pacific, intending to fly to Santiago, but due to fog, we had to divert to Mendoza in Argentina. Let's now talk about his trip to Rio. Okay, he left Sydney towards Christchurch, and I made the arrows here, green and yellow, Australian colors and Brazilian colors as well. Now, I don't, he hasn't given this data here. Uh, you saw the pilot uh, from flying from New York to Europe, how he has to enter his you know, the flight number, I think that was already there. And the ATC gave him exactly the green light to go. And he could not leave that route. He cannot without communicating to ATC. So Wolfie has not given us this information. Well, Eddie, one thing you might not know about Wolfie's plane is because it's a um, 
corporate plane, it actually flies quite a bit higher than commercial traffic, which means they have a lot more freedom to go where they want. So they usually just get a whole level clearance, which means they can just fly anywhere on that level, or two or three levels, because they know there's going to be no commercial planes there, which basically means their flight planning, which they still do do, is a lot more open, shall we say. So I guess you wouldn't know that, though, because you don't seem to know a lot about flight planning. I may not be a smart man. Well, Banjo, he says often, how do we know the satellites are up there? Well, because we can see them with a telescope, dear lad. Have a look at this little video by my mate Wolfie. You can actually point your telescope at the satellites and you can see them. Now, of course, these are images from Wolfie, but you don't have to actually trust Wolfie. Why don't you just go to, say, your local astronomy club in your area? There will be one somewhere. These guys love letting people look through their telescopes. And go and have a look for yourself, mate. It's all too easy. If you want to do the research, I'm sure you'll find the answer is satellites are real. Now, I may not be a smart man, but those towers in the middle of the ocean don't look like satellites orbiting space to me. Geo guess the time guys, if anyone can ID those towers that Eddie thinks are way out in the ocean, can you drop a link to them into comments and we'll have a laugh at Eddie's expense. This is the range map for the satellite based Wi-Fi and you can see by these patterns that they are clearly coming from geostationary satellites. Did you see how this service does cover Africa? You even showed it yourself. Perhaps you didn't understand what that graphic meant. Well, this means that Wolfie could fly over any part of Kenya and have the same Wi-Fi as he had while he was flying in 2016. Now, why do they not have this? Well, it might be something to do with the fact that on the plane, the smallest service that you can buy is about 5,000 US per month. I guess that's a whole lot of goats you've got to herd to be able to afford that. With progressive deployment of the Loon service in Kenya, places that do not have internet access will now have it, thanks to a partnership between Loon and Telcom Kenya. I saw are the satellites racist? They don't want to fly over Africa because uh, apparently Wolfie was able to get Wi-Fi back in 2016 when he was flying from Christchurch in the middle of nowhere to uh, Chile to Argentina and uh, still uh, 2020 whole part many parts of Africa still can't get uh, Wi-Fi. Well, if Wolfie did fly over Kenya, he would have Wi-Fi via the satellite, as shown on the coverage map that you showed and didn't comprehend, Eddie. The reason they didn't have this system in Kenya is money. It costs around 5000 per month to have the Wi-Fi in the plane. That's not cheap. So how many times have you got that wrong now, Eddie? Coming from Christchurch to Rio to Santiago. So if he was able to reach Wi-Fi signal back in 2016 before the new system had been in place, installed, that means that back in 2016, ground-based was, some ground-based stations was, were able to transmit Wi-Fi signal. No, Eddie, it means that the Wi-Fi is going via IMASAT. Now that's a satellite system that does communications, not ADSB and not GPS. You've got to work out which ones do which. They don't all just interchange. Additionally, in December 2016, I posted this video. Flat Earth non-stop flight Rio Brazil to Cape Town, Africa, a GPS log analysis. That was on our return trip from the Rio Olympics back to Australia. A simple app. You download to your phone, you, you go to Google Maps, you see your location, this guy here, you're here in India, right? He's in the north of India. Okay, so you just go to your Play Store, in the case, or iTunes, or whatever you have. Just download this app, fake location app. And guess what? You can actually fake your location. Well, yes, these things can be faked, but you have to show that they are being faked. Why did you not understand that? I may not be a smart man. Well, look, I'm giving up. There's getting way too much to deal with. The derp level is getting too high. I don't know if Eddie is just getting himself all confused or his understanding of English is not so good. He keeps thinking that any satellite can do GPS or communications or Wi-Fi. Now listen very carefully. I shall say this only once. Well, guess where GPS antennas are located on the plane's fuselage, Eddie? I don't entirely know. Correct, on top. 
Oh, and the ADS-B system that sends the plane's position to places like flight radar, flight aware, etc. Those antennas were on the underside of the plane to transmit to ground-based receivers. But that system had a limitation. You know, planes would drop off the coverage map at around 400 kilometres out to sea. Why was that? Earth curvature. Ooh, booyah. Now, just look at the Earth Curve Calculator for a plane that's at 10,000 metres up and has 10,000 metres of hidden at around, yes, you guessed it, 400 kilometres away. How about that? But it gets better. Currently, they are now putting ADS-B antennas on top of the planes. This is so the planes can send their data to the Arion system, and the receivers for those are on the Iridium Next satellites, which are in orbit. And these are now providing the live flight tracking data from all across the oceans. See? And what's worse for Eddie, the one more orbit flight last year, when it flew over the South Pole, was tracked by Arian system. Ooh, flying over the South Pole and tracked by satellites, double kill. I went to Aeron website, I watched a couple of their videos, and I found something uh, not really that I was expecting to find. The eighth and final Iridium Next launch took place. And now we celebrate the completion of a brand new network. So there's a reason why I have Mickey Mouse in outfit, uh, space outfit there. Nine, this Falcon 9 rocket is the same one that they found a rat in space. But viral video clips shared to social media appear to show an unexpected stowaway on SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket, with many claiming a mouse could be seen during the historic launch. Well, there's just one more thing. Hugh Jars will do this one for me. He is great. And there is a link to Hugh Jars' channel up in the top right hand corner. Space rodents, take it away, Hugh. In a video clip uploaded to Twitter, a small, grey object is seen moving around the top part of the Falcon 9's red hot engine nozzle. Oh, space mice again? I mean, really? Really? Okay, here we go. First of all, that's clearly not a mouse, as you can see from this footage from the Falcon 9 launch of the 30th of August, 2020. It's a piece of ice. It's clearly a piece of ice. Definitely not mouse shaped. And what it is, is frozen liquid oxygen. There's a little vent at the top of the rocket bell there. When the pressure in the liquid oxygen pipes exceeds limits, they vent a little bit. In the vacuum of space, and if it's not in the sun, it'll freeze instantly and become a solid form. Hence, you get an ice crystal. You see this on almost every Falcon launch. Look it up. That's all it is. Where will these idiots learn? We know what it is. It's not what you think it is. Get on with your life. Please subscribe to Hugh Jars. Hopefully Wolfie will leave a card in the top right hand corner there. Eddie, one more orbit. I think you need to have a look at this. It was a set of four flights that circumnavigated the globe and they went over both poles. In, and they did it in just over 46 hours. Now leg three is the one that you're going to need to look at. It went from Mauritius to Ponta Arena. And the plane was photographed as it went over the South Pole, so there's absolutely no question of that actually happening. And it was also tracked by ADSB, and that was the space-based version of Arion did it as well. It showed up in their weekly log. It wasn't advertised, but we saw it and we rejoiced. What does the four legs of one more orbit look like on a flat map? Well, something like this. Now Antonio Subrats, he had a hernia over this one. He tried, but he failed. He couldn't plot it. So how about you, Eddie? Can you do better than Antonio? Now that leg three is going to get you, because you've got to get the way from Mauritius down to the South Pole, which is on the rim, and then all the way back around to the other side. I'm not sure how you're going to do that. And I don't think any of your jet streams are going to save you, unless you can magic and Pac-Man off of one side and back to the other. Perhaps that will help. Now, if you only do one thing in response to all of this, please let it be this part. Please show me how you think you can get from Mauritius to Ponta Arena in just 13 hours and 20 minutes. I really love to see you have a go. There are videos showing where it landed in Mauritius and refueled. And here's a few little stills from it. I won't show you the whole thing. I don't have his permission as yet. And here is where they were refueling in Ponta Arena just 
13 hours and 20 minutes later. So I'm not sure how you're going to work this out. It's all been verified. We did the research, we watched it happening live. So I'm not sure where you're going to go with this one, Eddie. Oh, and Florence Gamer, one of my excellent subs. She's got this nice little timetable of codes and the flights here as well. So there you go, have a look at that. Well, I think I'm all derped out. So thanks very much, Eddie, for playing. I'm not sure where you're going to go with this, but mate, please, 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 please plot this uh, one more orbit on your flat pizza world and let's just see what you can do with it. I'm not sure how you're going to make this one line up. Because one more orbit, leg three, demonstrably shows you there is no way the Earth can be flat. It simply has to be a globe. I may not be a smart man. And to end this video, the flat Earth is not really popular. The ball Earth is backed by NASA, all the universities and common sense. So where do you stand? Do you stand with the large crown, scientists and the common sense? So while you're wondering how long before flatties start talking about space birds, how about you give me a click and a like and a subscribe too. Thanks guys.